This is Fat to Fierce. Welcome to the Confidence Chronicles. I'm your host, Amy English. Join me on this empowering adventure towards a healthier relationship with food, body, and self, one delicious bite at a time. Hello there. In today's episode, I'm going to share a story about cake, but before I dive in, let's get curious for a moment. When you've had a stressful day or when life throws a curveball and you want to eat something and you decide, I don't care, I want something that will make me feel good in the moment. We've all been there, right? What is that something? What is the something that you're looking for? What is the food you typically go for when you eat emotionally? Because that's what emotional eating is. It's eating to get relief, for comfort, to distract, or to fill a void. It's eating to feel better in the moment. We'll often tell ourselves that it's about taste, and and that can be true, absolutely. But there's always something behind it. And what's behind it is a feeling that we're looking for in the moment and we're looking at the specific food to provide that feeling. Once you're on to this, like this is some of that information, like once you know, you can't unknow it. So this is like a gold nuggets of awareness, of wisdom into some of your eating behaviors. It's incredibly powerful and helpful information to have. And over the years, what's even more interesting, I have learned that people who eat emotionally, who binge eat, who tend to overeat, have specific foods that they gravitate towards or foods that fit within like a specific category. And what I mean by that is sweets or savory foods. So with sweets, it's your dessert type foods. With more savory foods, it might be, you know, something spicy or salty, non-dessert type foods. And then there's the texture to consider too. This can be very important information. Whether you tend to go for foods that are soft, you know, ice cream, smooth, peanut butter, or things that are hard and crunchy, like chips. Now, when I was eating emotionally, I almost always went for sweets, cookies, brownies, ice cream, and cake. Now, sweets are fairly common among most emotional eaters that I know. I have had clients that preferred salty, crunchy foods like popcorn and chips, and peanut butter Peanut butter is also a very common go-to. The point is, there is a ton of information in the foods we tend to choose to eat emotionally. And just a little side note here, it is really interesting to pay attention to the type of food you're drawn to and that feeling that you're looking for. I often say, a warm brownie is like a warm hug. And I've had clients who craved more salty, spicy, crunchy food. Crunching on something offers relief. So what I mean by that, when we looked closer at the salty, spicy, crunchy foods that they tended to go for, it was almost always connected to anger or frustration. So crunching was a way to express those feelings or to offer relief from those feelings. Isn't that wild? Like this was so interesting when I just dis- when I discovered this with a client and I've continued to offer this information when working with people one on one and even in the self study program because it is just like 
so eye-opening when you really pay attention to the types of foods you're eating and the feelings that you're either trying to distract from or the feelings that you're trying to, you know, feel to create. It's very, very interesting. So anyway, as mentioned, sweets were my thing. Sweets, dessert type foods, were my trusty reliables. They were my ride or die, so to speak. (laughs) I knew I could count on sweets to do the job. And what I mean by that is I knew I could count on them to bring comfort or relief or happiness or joy. And I had a thing with cake for a very long time. So that brings me to the story I'm going to share today about cake. So my husband and I moved away from home for the first time in 2000. It was soon after our wedding and our honeymoon. We are newly married, living in a new state, away from everyone and everything we knew. We had moved for my husband's job. His career has taken us to several different places over the last 20 some years. But at this time, back in 2000, I didn't have a job yet. And I was so homesick. Now, this was in 2000, so it was well before social media. And I can remember sitting in the duplex we rented, watching reruns of Matlock all afternoon because I didn't have a job at the time. I didn't know anybody. My family was all in New York. I, it was an unfamiliar area. And so I just watched reruns all day long. Now, when I began to venture out and explore the area a little bit, I discovered a grocery store. <laughs> of course, they're all over, right? Now, this particular grocery store had these little birthday cakes in the bakery. They were adorable. They were like individual size birthday cakes. Now, I have had a thing for buttercream icing for as long as I can remember. So birthday cake, buttercream icing has always been a thing for me. In fact, I'll share this real quick. I can remember after really stressful days of work, stopping at a store and getting a cake with chocolate chip cookies and taking the chocolate chip cookies and just scraping off the icing and eating them that way. That used to be something I did often. Okay, anyway. So so seeing these little individual birthday cakes at the grocery store, of course I got one. And you know what? That little cake hit the spot. It was a little bright spot in my day. The next day, I went back to the store and bought another cake. Then again the next day. So back in 2000, every afternoon, I watched Matlock and ate cake. (laughs) Now, while this might sound like a dream come true for some, it was a very dark time for me. I didn't know how to process the transition of our move. I didn't know how to handle the grief I was experiencing as my life and my identity was changing. So I ate cake, lots of cake. I was looking for and finding joy in a cake. Now it got to a point where my husband started questioning my afternoon activities. He knew I was sad and he, and he saw the empty cake containers in the garbage. Now, my husband has never shamed me for eating, but he knew something was up. So I started to hide the evidence. I can remember standing in the kitchen, cutting up the empty cake containers so that I could bury them in the garbage. This went on for a while. I was eating to fill the sadness, finding happiness in an individual birthday cake. And the worst part, I hated myself for doing this. I hated myself for having to hide the evidence and for this becoming a problem. I even remember 
one time I was so frustrated with myself for getting these cakes and eating them every day <laughs> that I threw the cake away. Like in the container, I put it in the garbage. And then I dug it out a few hours later and proceeded to eat it. I share this story so that people understand they're not alone. Emotional eating and especially binge eating can be very, they can feel shameful. There's a lot of shame. At least there was a lot of shame I used to carry with with these habits with food. And I like to bring light to that shame. That's why I share these stories. Because if you are someone who struggles with this, it is really important to know that you're not alone and to know that there is someone, several people out there who can not only help, but who have been there before and who understand this habit. You know, I was talking with someone recently and, you know, she had worked with a therapist and and I have before too. But the struggle is that when the person you're talking to has never experienced this kind of thing, yes, they can offer tools and and have compassion and, and all that good stuff, but they don't always get it. And it's hard to bring up to someone who doesn't get it. So that's also why I like to share these stories because I, I do believe, and, and I know this through my experience, that it helps, it helps my clients anyway <laughs> feel comfortable bringing up their stories knowing that I once dug a cake out of the garbage, okay? <laughs> that's where I'll leave that. So back to um, food, back, back to the cake. I often think the unhealthy habits that are formed with food are no different than habits with drugs or alcohol. They're just more socially acceptable, sort of. And what I mean by that is they're not illegal. Food is more accessible, it's easier to get. One of the things I I used to say is like no one's no one's going to arrest you for driving around eating a package of Oreos. Like, it's just not going to happen. And also, we need food to survive. Food is part of everyday life. But we're supposed to be able to control ourselves around food. At least that's what I was always told. But I couldn't. So then I thought there was something wrong with me. And the worse I felt, the more I ate. It was a never-ending cycle that fueled more sadness and frustration, which resulted in more cake. All of this that I've explained is what makes the emotional eating cycle so incredibly challenging. And again, I'll just repeat this, because why not? This is why it's really helpful to talk with somebody who's been there and who gets it. So back to my story about cake. As the months went by, I started to get more comfortable in my new surroundings in Connecticut back in 2000. I tried a few different jobs and ultimately landed a great gig in wireless telecommunications and I was in that career for 15 years. Things slowly started to get better and when that happened, I stopped buying the cake. At some point, I quit getting the cake. But I still struggled with emotional eating and with sweets, and that would continue on for years to come. In fact, several several years after this, probably somewhere around 2010, my kids were little, I was gonna start a cupcake business. I was really good at making cupcakes. I make delicious cupcakes, and I actually had a few gigs, but I couldn't control myself around the buttercream icing. Making cupcakes was a challenge and I was eating all my profits. (laughs) So, I mean, I guess in a way it's good that it didn't work out because here I am now as an emotional eating coach. (laughs) Anyway, it wasn't until I hired my first life coach in 2015 that I started to explore my relationship with food and the tendency to eat emotionally, especially sweets. 
And that is when I started to find the relief I had been looking for. There was a way to change the habit of emotional eating that did not involve more restrictive dieting. And I think that's an important piece here because I know for me, I was chasing, I was trying to chase weight loss while battling these addictions to food. And it always ended up the same. I would lose a bunch of weight only to come off the plan or end the diet and then gain it all back plus more because I did not have a handle on my relationship with food. My eating habits and my eating patterns were getting in the way of the goals I was trying to achieve. And this is when I realized that you've got to look at these as two separate things. Weight loss and emotional eating can be really closely linked together. I know for me personally it was for a really long time and for most of my clients it is. They they want to lose weight. They're good at losing weight. They've been dieting most of their lives, but they have this sinister habit with food that keeps messing everything up every time they fall down because they fall down and they can't get back up and then they continue to repeat the cycle like I was doing with the birthday cakes. So... That's where it is incredibly helpful to start looking at these as two things. The diet is not going to solve the relationship with food. The diet will solve for weight loss, but it's not going to solve for the relationship with food. And so having a different approach to healing the relationship with food and, you know, then you get to decide whatever you want to do moving forward, whether you want to focus on weight loss or not, that's entirely up to you. And I truly believe that every person, you know, has to make that decision for themselves, but heal that relationship with food, know that you can change your eating habits, regain that control, regain that confidence, and know that you have your own back no matter what, and know that you can make conscious choices to support yourself and support where you want to go, where you want to move. Okay. Back to the story. (laughs) So every once in a while, I do think about our first years in Connecticut. And many times when I'm at the grocery store and I walk past the bakery department, I think about those little cakes. It's funny because I, I don't really see them anymore. I never see those little individual cakes, but I, I can laugh about it. Now I can laugh about it. And it makes me realize just how far I have come over the years in healing the relationship with food and with buttercream icing. And also, I just want to kind of, I just want to share also here that, you know, the relationship with buttercream icing, that, I resolved that like fairly recently because that was still a thing that would come up for me every once in a while where I would really start to crave buttercream icing. And I the the closer I looked into it, the more I would kind of investigate with curiosity and compassion. Like, what is it about buttercream icing? Like that I have this thing like, yeah, it tastes delicious. At least I think it does. But I feel terrible when I eat it. It, you know, that alone it was enough reason for me not to want it. But I would continue to think about it. And I just didn't understand why. And so as I started to look into it with, you know, some of my coaching peers, I, by the way, like this is why it's helpful to work with a life coach, okay? Because you don't always see it for yourself. And sometimes, at most times, it is helpful to have somebody else who can, who's listening, kind of see, help you see, help guide you to, to the answers that you're looking for. That's kind of what we do as life coaches. Anyway. Um, one of my coaching peers was able to help me see the nostalgia behind buttercream icing because my nani, my grandma, used to make homemade birthday cakes with buttercream icing. 
And I remember as a kid going to her house for her birthday and for my grandpa's birthday and having those cakes. And when I think of buttercream icing now, I can always picture her homemade cakes. And they're no longer here. They, they have both passed on. But I think there's that, there's that connection to them in some way through the frosting. <laughs> It's just interesting to be able to see that. And it just helps me look at buttercream through a different lens. One that is filled with, you know, love and compassion and all that good stuff. And that's actually helped me separate my separate from the, you know, what I thought was this continuous desire to eat buttercream icing. It's not, it's the connection. It's the memories. It's the nostalgia. It's the love. It's always, always a feeling that we're looking for. So I hope this is helpful and offers, you know, some insight to think about as you explore your own relationship with food. And as always, if you'd like to get support, head to amyenglishcc.com, book a discovery call. Until next time. Are you ready to take control of your eating, embrace your body, and boost your confidence? Then let's get fierce. Start your fat to fierce journey today. Go to amyenglishcc.com for more resources and to book your discovery call.